Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Secretary Yellen, I'm sure you know earlier this year the European Union's Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive went into effect. This EU law has unprecedented scope and will impose ESG-related requirements on many U.S. businesses requiring that they gather detailed information from their suppliers, which include American small businesses. These rules go farther than even the most aggressive proposals by our own regulators. As you know, SEC Chairman Gensler's proposal would mandate disclosure of Scope 3 greenhouse gas emissions from American companies. This proposal has been widely criticized for the burden that it imposes on businesses of all sizes. And as bad as the SEC's proposal is, the EU has now imposed a standard that is much more burdensome in which many American businesses are already preparing to comply with. I'm sure you can understand why this proposal is troubling to members of Congress when foreign governments mandate, put their mandates on U.S. businesses. On this matter, what is the administration doing to protect U.S. businesses from burdensome foreign regulation and prevent efforts which undermine our sovereignty? Well, different countries are moving at different speeds and in different ways to address climate change. And um, we are encountering um, conflicts with other countries because of differences in our approaches. I think as a fundamental, we agree with the European Union that disclosure of climate-related risks is important so, so that investors are able to make good choices about um, where they invest and understand the risks in different companies. So as a general matter, um, we, we believe, as the Europeans do, in disclosure, which is behind Chair Gensler's proposal. I know he's received many comments on. But we are engaging with the European Commission to understand the implications of their proposals. We want to avoid unnecessary market fragmentation, which different approaches can produce. We want to maintain a level playing field for U.S. Uh, companies and make sure that they're not burdened with incompatible regulatory requirements around the world. So um, this is a, an important issue that we're focused on addressing. All right, I accept that. Uh, Secretary, also this administration, and you just pr claimed prior that billions of dollars in additional funding provided the IRS in 2023 for increased enforcement will somehow not be used to target individuals making less than $400,000 per year. I got to tell you, I'm a little skeptical of that claim. And, uh, you know, I, and which specific mechanisms has your department and the IRS put into place to make sure that this money is not used on burdensome audits for ordinary Americans? I've issued a directive to the IRS that clearly prohibits them from using these funds to target individuals or small businesses making under $400,000. And let's be clear, the reason, the focus of this, there are really two focuses of this money that's been allocated. One is to greatly improve customer service, both for individuals and for businesses, modernizing the IRS. And the second is to address the tax gap. And the tax gap isn't related to individuals or small businesses making under $400,000 a year. It's um, wealthy, very high income individuals, complex partnerships, and corporations that are by and large um, underreporting and underpaying their tax. And uh, the money will go to hiring um, trained, experienced accountants and tax professionals who are able to do the complex audits that are necessary to recover those funds. So there, there would be no motivation to um, want to target taxpayers making under $400,000. And I have directed the IRS that they may not do so. For 10 years now, I've been on this committee, and money has been given year after year to automate the processes at the IRS. And now you're saying that they need more manpower versus automation. They need manpower and automation. And there will be, um, for example, of the um, resources in the budget for 2024, 
uh, the lion's share will go toward technology and operations, some toward um, net increases in enforcement. That will take time, but there will be massive improvements over time in technology, and we will end up with a modern agency that um, people will have much better experience and companies interacting with. I yield back. Mr. Pocan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for uh, holding this hearing. Appreciate